Hello everyone, Dom here from Esports News UK, uh, back with someone who I interviewed back in 2016, I think it was, I mean for the old school League of Legends lot um, and beyond, you know, in, in League of Legends in general, a well-known name, Ali Grosscore Larson. Ali, how's it going, mate? Really good. I think it's great. It's been a while since we've done one of these, isn't it? Blimey. It has, yeah. And, and I want to start with um, Ali. I think the reason for doing this interview is two things. I've seen you finally hit Grandmaster the other day, and I know you're going to do some kind of return to streaming. So That's it'd be fine. good to talk about that and also address some of the controversies cool. in the past as well, your recent history. Um, sure. But it's interesting you mentioned that previous interview we'd done because back then the headline, the headline I used was, I'm leaving dra drama behind. Is what oh, you told me. Wow. <laughs> wow. But then you proceeded to get involved in loads more drama. So what is it about drama and yourself, Gross God? Do you just attract drama wow. when you don't want to? Do you really want to leave it behind or have you accepted uh, that sort of part of you? Okay. Okay. So two things. Number one, I want to let everyone know that I don't know any of these questions that Dom is about to ask me. That one took me by surprise. Because, uh, wow, that old article. Um, all right. Let me think. So the question is. Does, do I attract drama? Am I leaving it behind? Okay, so I've never liked drama, right? It just, I think people, I think everyone else, everyone else likes drama and how I react is just what the people want. But as I've gotten older, I just learned not to react anymore. It's just not for me. It's not my cup of tea. And I think my audience has grown up. But um, yeah, I just, I've never really been for drama. It just it always kind of lands on my doorstep and I've just done a reaction. And that's it. And it just kind of, I wouldn't go out my own way to make drama or controversy. It kind of hits. People just like to see me get, I'm so real that I think people like to see a real person's reaction. Mm. And I've never had it. I've never had a team behind me. I've never ever had a team, a legal team or anything like that to say, don't respond to this, do respond to this. And so I've just, it's just been on my own one man band. I've always have been. So that's why when anything came up, I'm, you know, I was brought up, you know, I didn't learn to control my emotions growing up. Mm. So if there's drama, I'm going to react in a bad way. And as I've grown up now, I've realized, okay, this person's trying to just make me react, and I've realized it, and that's the truth. But moving forward, I, I haven't been in any sort of controversy in years. Right? It's been years. We will, we might get to this tonight. So I don't know what, if you might ask about it, but we got banned on Twitch three years ago. Yeah, I was right? going to and cover that. And that drama that they brought up was also from years ago. So it's just a constant backlog. And, I, and moving forward... Not again, not to get to the next question too soon, but because you might ask me about this. But you know, if we are, it's I've noticed a pattern that when I get popular and I, I get the grind in and I start streaming and we start to get popular, these people like to bring up drama because it's like, oh, it's fun, you know, let's ruin this guy's career, it's doing so great, let's ruin this guy's career because everyone likes to see a downfall, everyone likes to see a comeback. Mm. So that's the truth. I've never out gone my own way with, with drama, I've never wanted to, but um, it just always lands on my doorstep and they just bring up the only thing they got is bring up old stuff, but. I think right now as it stands, everything's great. I mean, life, there's been no, nothing going on. It's been great. It's been lovely living in peace, to be honest. Before we get onto the controversies and the ban and all the accusations that were the thrown at you, you were talking about, you know, from what you were saying earlier, you seem a bit more chilled out. Now, I know beforehand I said, is there anything off the table in this interview? You said no, because I, as a journalist, I don't usually pry into people's personal lives. I, I leave that at the door usually, but I do think you know, you've always said you're very vocal, you speak about your life openly. Right. And, you know, in in the past, your rose to your rise to popularity, I think, came down to a lot of that. So are you more chilled out now? And is there any reason for that? Because I know you've okay. had medication and things in the past, okay. you know, so you've you've thrown around the word bipolar. At times you've said you've not bipolar and at times right. you've said you are, so I've got the answers. Okay, so three things. One is age. So I'm 32 this year. I know it's gone by so quickly. Am I 32? Okay, so that's one. Number two, vaping. I started vaping a couple of years ago. It was an accident. I was yeah. vaping non-nicotine ones. My friend bought me a nicotine one with 2%. Since then, I've been hooked on them, right? And I know the UK's banned on them, but we won't get into that. But vaping does mellow me out. Number three, it's not bipolar. I found out it's not bipolar. I found out I've been with Safi now for over, over two years. We plan on getting married this year. Can't wait for that. And uh, the thing is, when I met her, she goes, you're not bipolar, I can tell you that, you're ADHD like crazy. And if you take a look at what bipolar and ADHD, I hit the green light with all the ADHD and that's it. You know, if something's on my mind, I say it out loud. I never, very, I'd never get depressed. We all have down days, I'd never get depressed. 
and um, it's all ADHD. So mm. what I've been doing recently in the past few months, I did a TikTok about three months ago because I've always been a tea drinker, being British. And then three months ago, I thought I'd do a TikTok of me drinking a, a cup of coffee. I, I always loved the smell of coffee, but always had the taste of it. I tasted it one time when, when I was 18, hated it. Then for a TikTok about three months ago, I, I drank this cup of coffee, which was gross. But the more I drank this cup of coffee, which I hated, I, I, I kind of found a loving to it and I actually enjoyed the taste. And it, what, it made me focused, it made me awake. And, it, and then there's a study behind coffee and ADHD drinkers. So if wow. you are ADHD like crazy and you drink a cup of coffee, you know you hate it, you kind of grow a taste to it like anything. And every day now, I'm on three cups of coffee a day. And it just keeps me focused. It keeps me mellowed out. I can focus on the conversation I'm having with the person. Yeah. I can focus on the question. I can focus on... That's why I think it, coffee comes down to why I play good at League of Legends, because I can just fully focus. So th there's your answer. That's mm. probably why I've mellowed out is because I'm way more focused. I'm more focused than ever in, in my life, ever before, ever in my life is right now to this day. So do you control, do you take anything to control your ADHD? Have you sort no, of got that no. under control? It's just the coffee well, helps and you sort of managing it, it better. That's it. Yeah. But when you recognize what you have in South Pelosi, ADHD, I've never had a problem the past few years. I've never, I've never really had a problem. You know, I've never really had any like mental health. I was diagnosed bipolar. We went over this, I think, mm. but it was such a quick diagnosis. This woman diagnosed me in a space of two, two, we had went to, I sat down with this woman who I paid a private doctor, I paid her 500 pounds, and she diagnosed me with bipolar. Oh she gave me all this medication. She put me on something called uh, Quentin right? And bet she wanted me to get me on lithium. Lithium is what they use for people that have severe, like l lunatic people that have really deep dark thoughts. I was meant to get on lithium. This is back in 2016 when I got banned on Twitch, but the woman didn't sign the sheet so i went to the pharmacy to pick up the lithium they said she's not signed it and i believe that was like maybe that was god or maybe just the it happened for a reason again i'm not religious um but yeah i'm definitely you're not, not in your mormon bipolar. phase anymore no yeah. no we've also had all sorts of phases but i uh, know i've never I'm not on any medication for adhd i don't want to be i love where we're at who we are what we've gone through and i feel in a really good headspace and i'm not and another thing is is i, I don't have um anxiety anymore I, I i mean i sometimes get anxious but it's not on the level i mean we might get to this as well about streaming but anxiety is probably the biggest reason why i haven't had a full-time career in my life ever and that's it so we'll get to that we get to that it's up to you if you want to talk about that well anxiety is something i can relate to certainly and i, I think yeah. before we move on it's anyone else watching this that does has suffered from anxiety what's helped me a lot is just i know it sounds basic sleeping on time sleeping for a good amount, exercise, and eating healthily. You know, I joined a veterans footy team recently. That's helped me nice. a lot, you know. But, yeah, we'll come on to that, Ali. But yeah. thanks for – I mean, I've gone on a tangent there, right, but yeah. I think you've covered that pretty well. But I have to address the, the controversy. So you sure. were banned a few years ago. Three years ago. Twitch March. said it was um, adult sexual exploitation. Now, you recently put out a tweet or a post saying – Three years ago, you was banned for a false reason. You said, in 2016, I made up a drama for clout and views. I never revenge pawned anyone. Uh, maybe if they looked into the accusations onto every banned streamer, then Twitch wouldn't be a non-profitable company. So from, from my perspective as a journalist, someone reached out to me just before that happened, like a month or two before, um, saying, oh, I've got all this dirt on Ali big long like google doc whatever it was i looked through it all there were some accusations in there of course but after i google looked through doc? it was this the google doc that came out it became a paste bin right yeah, and then right. that was yep. deleted so i read it all and i got back to the person who sent me it and i said there are accusations in here but i can't see any proof there is a lot of um you know out of context clips that have been woven together uh, as a journalist when i'm reporting on facts and i'm reporting on things i have to be careful to make sure it is uh, factual it is accurate now obviously there were some uh, people that came forward some women who came forward who claimed uh, you behaved inappropriately uh, this that and the other I think you put out a tweet saying one instance you were 16 or, or, or 17 or so and they were a similar age right so it was so what is your stance on that now Okay, Ali, right. and, and there's a lot to there's a lot to unfold, unpack here, right? So it goes, it starts. Well, I've been grow school since I was 13. I'm now 31. Again, I was brought up. I wasn't. I love my mum, 
pieces and I'd love my dad, adore, I'd adore my dad. But I wasn't brought up, I, I was brought up to be, just be open, do whatever you want, say whatever you want, that's, just be yourself and, and, and that, you know, honestly, that's, that's bad parenting in my opinion because look where it's led me, I've just been a, an idiot. So, I used to, 10 years ago when I first started streaming, I used to love triggering the internet for clout and views, right? Hands down. So I used to say the most dumbest things. I used to make Facebook rants to trigger people because they would drive the views up. And I felt like I was untouchable on Twitch. I can't, Twitch won't ban me on Grow School. That was my attitude, all right? They're not going to ban me. They can't ban me. I'm not the biggest streamer. So I say all these controversial things, which I didn't mean, for clout views, which would drive more views to my, my, my stream. And I was this crazy person, which I loved being because I was young and I was an idiot. So I'd start by saying the one that I hate the most is this rant video they've got on me. And they still use it to this day. So it's me walking through Canterbury when I was in, when I was 21, bragging. This is me bragging. I slept with a. And I don't want to keep this PG because I, I know I don't want to upset your audience. But I was 21, bragging I slept with a 16-year-old. And I was telling the viewers on this Facebook rant, I'd happily do it again to trigger the internet. Looking back at it, that was a stupid thing to say. There was no counterculture. Again, did it for views and clicks. Was it a dumb thing to say? Yes. Now, addressing the whole thing. I was 17 years old. I was in college. I had a girlfriend called Abby. We did. She was my girlfriend for a few months. We did sleep together. That happened. That's it. Just that to cut in really good. quickly, the age of yeah. consent in the UK is 16, but Correct. obviously that's there's right. a, there's a I, thing with minors. And... That's right, because yeah. Americans, oh, a lot of the uh, Twitch viewers are Americans, so they're going to see it as you're a pedophile. So that's that. So then we have this revenge porn thing, which I absolutely hate, to be honest, because it's so ridiculous. Looking back at it, it's my mistake, because this is what I did for, for clout and views. So there was a woman called Celestia Vega. Wish her the best. I don't know where she is. She's gone missing on the internet for years now because she doesn't I spoke to her three or four years ago she doesn't want to be on the internet anymore she became an adult star she went bald she had a Britney Spears days bless her and um, she gassed up she was all this and that and then it came down to it and it went bad so in 2016 I got banned on Twitch I was emotional and I was hurt because I loved Twitch so much and how they banned me first time ban it was upsetting I had a two I had two minor so this is a face. separate ban right this, this is was it. your first yeah, so ban this was my first ban in 2016. I've been banned twice. Don't get that confused. And so, what happened was we um, we would we were we were kind of like it was like a fling thing on the internet. I had loads of fan girls. I was a famous streamer. I used to stream to 20,000, 30,000 viewers, especially when I was on the Master Tier promos. And what happened was, um, she used to hang out with Ice Poseidon because you know that's how streamers connect. They all meet up and they connect. And on this stream, after I got banned, they all met up. And it made fun of me. And that didn't go down with well with me. Me being open and me being hurt by and me being upset they all poke fun of me because I was banned. I got angry. I got triggered. And so I, at the time, now I've never had any nudes of this girl ever. You know, that I just, I've never had nudes of anyone because I, I, I just not me that keep people's nudes. It's just, it's just weird, right? Swear on myself. And then what happened was, but I did have pictures of her in a bikini because she posted them all on Instagram. And her mum was a religious woman. She was like a Catholic or something or other, like religious. And her mum thought her daughter was the best thing in the world and she, her daughter would never get into like the adult working industry. So I got upset and I put on Snapchat bragging. So I, I actually, I compiled her Instagram pictures and put them on a USB drive and I sent that to her mum because I was angry. And I was like, you make fun of me. You're gonna, you've hurt me. I was scorched. I lost everything on Twitch. I was losing fans by the daily. And I bragged on Snapchat that I did that. And still, and that is what Twitch has got me on. Mm -hmm. They stay claiming that is adult sexual, uh, sexual exploitation and that's revenge porn. And that's what got me canned. Now her mum never received that USB, right? Cause she confirmed it to me, she never. And Celestia, her name isn't Celestia, but that's her in internet nickname. But she at the time, when, when, when I was, popular growing popularity three years ago again because i kept my head down kept kept clean kept polite and then everyone wanted to see the downfall mainly runescapers wanted to see me downfall and there's all these uprise of these runescapers they got because you used to stream runescape right that's before right so the runes the runescape community is funny because runescapers and i won't keep i'll keep this brief but runescapers they're playing this point click they're playing this click game so they've got two monitors everyone has two dual monitors and they're playing this runescape game and they're bored what they're going to do they're going to browse the internet and just look for drama because that's because they're humans and they're, they're bored and so they love i always say this i love runescape the game i don't like the community because they love drama 
And this, at the time, I, I dumped RuneScape, and I was brought up with RuneScape, I was famous for RuneScape as a kid, and then when I was 18, I dropped that community and went full-time League of Legends, and still to this day, they're mad at me for doing that. So the RuneScape community are never fond of me, and then there's the RuneFest whole thing, which I won't bother getting into, because I've got a lot to unpack. That's coming back this year, will you be making an appearance? Well, I'm still banned from, I'm the only, I'm the first, know, I'm only a, banned a person from RuneFest. Joke. It was a <laughs> So what happened was um, that, you know, I, I became really popular. All these rooms compared to what I see my downfall. This person who we can also get to writ this paste bin, uh, who was an absolute insane, crazed hater of mine. And he has his reasons to be a hater. We can get to that person shortly if you want to, because I know you mentioned the paste bin. And then what happened was I was on 15,000 viewers, growing no host a day on Twitch. And every day me and Ryan were going, this is insane. We're growing like crazy. And then it, they brought up all this stuff. Now, so back to the revenge porn so celestia came out and she wasn't mad at me or angry at me for this revenge box which again which in my opinion it wasn't she was just upset that people were bringing up her and she didn't like being on the front of the internet she didn't want people talking about her so she made a, a audio on twitter which is public it's still there to this day i'm pretty sure you can find the recording and she's like i'm just sick of people coming out i'm hurt please leave me alone and I think Twitch saw that and thought, oh, she's hurt by growth score. So growth score, it, she's clearly hurt. They're not, again, Twitch being Twitch, they're not smart. They make wrong decisions. They can always make wrong decisions. And they've looked at that and gone, oh, he's made her upset. We're canning for that. And that is what they're, and I'm angry to this day because I'm banned for this. And I, I'm not trying to get unbanned on Twitch. I don't care if they do unban me on Twitch because I found a new home and I can't wait to start. But that is basically the story. It was other things as well. That people love drama. Again, I've been gross since I was 13. And it's just, they've got me on so many little things. There was one time in 2017, I said, because I've got a daughter. And I said, and someone in the chat asked me, this is when I was very hated because I was all over the place with my not, I wasn't drinking coffee and I was all over the place and I was hurt and I was emotional. And all my, I, I got my, my girlfriend at the time got pregnant. I got fat and when I gained weight. I was, again, I was emotional when I was hurt. XQC had a big uprise, Greek God, and I'm just down there with 500 viewers and people in the chat. People, streaming is very hard. It's not easy because you're constantly bullied in the chat for your criteria of how many viewers you have if you make your stream about the viewers. So, the world's a funny place. Let's see, say you hit a new peak of your review account. Right, guys, we've got a thousand viewers. It sounds great. But then the viewers watching are going to know that you're all about that. So they're going to use it against you when you're having a bad day. When you've got 300 viewers. Then they're going to say, oh, you've only got 300 viewers. What happened? And that's going to sting. So it's it's a really funny world we live in. And you've got to be really smart when it comes to streaming. Moral story, do it because you love doing it. Don't do it for viewers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for this whole emotional time, whole emotional thing over there and some and i was hated because people had the wrong audience because i made them the wrong audience that's my fault and then somebody in the chat said to me do you change your daughter's napping and i thought to myself at the time all right okay i can't say yes because if i say yes they're going to call me a pedophile because i know what they're like so i'm going to say no because that's a woman's job this is back in 2017 this is a stupid take that i said this is seven years ago so i said no that's a that's a woman's job i'm a, I'm a bloke i wouldn't do that and still to this day they say this guy sexualized his own daughter. This guy's a pedophile. So there was no right, right or wrong answer back then. Because obviously I should have said yes, because I've changed my, da my daughter's nappies hundreds of times. But back then I was stupid and tried to kind of douse the flame that I knew was coming. And now to this day, they've got that on the pace bin. They've got this on the pace bin. Gross gore, sexualized his own kid. Here's a clip. And it's me going, I don't change my daughter's nappy. It's a woman's job because I'm a bloke. And that's it. It's a funny place in the internet. And there you go. But looking back at it, she's just been honest. Yes, I do. If they're going to think I'm a pedophile, they're weird enough to think like that. But that's the internet. And there we go. So you've denied um, the accusations that you were against you. You did apologize, right, at the time and said I've... you've made some mistakes in the past and your behavior has oh, yeah. not I... been great. I, I stand by that. I, I definitely, I'm not going to sit here and act like a saint. I've been an absolute degenerate in my life on the internet 10 years ago. Um, maybe in five years at my 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 behavior i'm not trying i don't care about runescape nor do i care about the roof fest but my behavior there was just stupid like you know and we can get into that if you really wanted to if you if you if, if, if you want to if it's interesting enough for you but i've been a degenerate no doubt about it have i done anything illegal definitely not have i ever sexually exploited someone 100 not have i been like uh, a creep to women if they're that's another whole ballpark. But me being flirty, me, when I was single, I used to flirt with every woman. I just, because I'm a 90s child. I was born in 1992. 
this new generation of all these 20 year olds you flirt with them they think you're sexually assaulting them harassing them it's just a different age generation gap that's how it is and that's the world we live in um and i was in a spotlight i've never had a managing team that's it but no i have been definitely a degenerate i've said stupid stuff for clout and clicks and views have i don't think i said anything illegal definitely no but I've been a degenerate my time, yes. And that's why I'm sitting here right now with a free consciousness. I've got a, a beautiful woman that I, I plan on marrying. Uh, my viewers love me right now. Everything's great. I sleep well at night. I know deep in my heart, and God can only judge me. Again, I'm not religious though, but I know I'm a good person and I'm going to a good place the day I die. So that's it, because I've got no skeletons in my closet. But I have been a degenerate. But there are worse streamers out there. There is, and I will happily name, like there's one guy who's a league streamer, got done got absolutely exposed for chatting to like 13 year olds to which still have him on there i don't know if you've ever heard of this guy i won't say his name because unless you unless, unless i'm allowed to but he's all over twitch it was all over reddit you know he's a, he's a legal end streamer absolutely exposed to all the children loads of times like loads and these girls would say i'm 13 and it's continued conversation calling making them call him daddy and stuff he's still on twitch but gross score no he's not because we just don't like gross score Maybe we can why. chat after the recording. Absolutely. I don't want to put his Absol name in, you know, for legal or whatever absolutely. reasons. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but but yeah. speaking of legal reasons as well, Ali, I think you did a video a few months ago um, where you hinted at considering legal action because from what I saw or what I could see, there is one person who is pretty against you, um, who, you know, has hounded a few uh, companies and so on. His name is Thank Chaos you. Bender. Yeah, correct. And you did hint at uh, looking at legal action in the past. So right. my thought is, you know, you seem so, to have not minded that much that this right. has happened. Yeah. You know, okay. some people would look at taking action and so on. What are your What are your views? And okay. yeah, there. So there's two things I'm a, I'm a strong believer of. Number one is everything in life happens for a reason. No matter how bad you're going through it, you're, let's just say you're piss broke. Sorry for my language. And let's say you're extremely poor and you're homeless on the street. It's happening for a reason. It will get better. It's, you're, it's a learning lesson in life. Everything happens for a reason. I'm just saying, so, you can swear. You can oh, swear. Oh, fantastic. We're right. not, it's not the BBC. So, lovely. So, every happens for a reason. Definitely believe in that. No matter how bad your life is going right now, it's happening for a reason and it will get better. You've got to go right at the bottom to, to, get the, to have the bad days and you've got to have the good days. It all happens for a reason. Now, Cal Spender, this is the guy. This is the guy that went his own way he had nothing. He had no fans, no following, no YouTube, no Twitch, no nothing. And I've got to give him credit because he's done a smash-up good job. I believe that I'm the reason for his inspiration because he right now is a really popular RuneScape YouTuber. Because years ago, I told him, and I remember this, he came to me and I pretty much said to him, he tried trolling me or something, and I said to him, you're a dead YouTuber, no one watches you, you're a nobody. He took that energy. And still to this day, he posts legal con uh, he posts RuneScape content, old school RuneScape, and he does a smashing good job. So you've got to give credit where credit's due, and he's done a fantastic job. Now, I know people that have dirt on him, and now he's going through what I've gone through as a content creator. And I'm going to be honest with you, Dom, I haven't heard from this guy in about two plus years. Around about two, about we've hit the two year mark now. He's gone missing. He's off my radar. I don't know if he plans on coming back to be my number one hater. But Cowsbender is definitely. Maybe people will call him a sociopath, but he would go out. This guy was so psycho at the time. I don't, I don't know if he's a psycho, but his actions definitely were. He did everything in his power to get me cancelled slash banned off Twitch, and he succeeded. He is the man behind the pay spin. He lived every day, day in, day. He lives in Mexico with a wife, and he's I'm, got a happy life. But in his spare life, in his spare time, he was my number one guy that was always the guy root of all problems. This guy was so crazy at the time that he would send it was, this is an example i had an old best friend called ryan and we fell out for reasons and so and, uh, uh, and he's done fantastic now he, he was living in thailand and i don't want to bore you but he's doing great he has his own company now and i, I sometimes i peek at his instagram check it he's doing okay because i still obviously i still care for him want to see him do well because that's how i am now i just want to see him do well i'm happy to see cow's bender do well despite him picking for all the dirt for all the years he did now more of the story is this he sent for he's what i call an absolute social engineering master social engineering is where someone would just convince someone something to scare them to get their own way he was the one to email all these companies he emailed streamlabs 
a Streamlabs banned me because he wrote a formal letter to them. I almost forgot so about scary. that. So scary. Yep, saying, hey, you've got Crow Score. This is uh, uh, using your platform. This um, He's a known pedophile. He's a woman rapist and all this stuff and he grooms children and he's he, he, he revenge porns people he, he he you know he he um he, he he groomed his own sister into doing an only fans and, and and they're gonna he scammed his own family they're gonna pull everything they, he's gonna pull it and he did and he said he's using your service if you let him still use your service you are also a child you're also uh, um accepting that pedophilia is okay and they were so scared by it that they said we can't let you use our service anymore it didn't stop there. He went to Stream Elements, a very popular streaming uh, donation platform. We can send donations. He went to them. They contacted me and said, Ali, I'm so sorry we can't let you use our platform. Keep in mind that Streamlabs and Stream Elements have never, ever banned it over their platforms, but they banned me. Was the first I remember streamer. writing that headline. You were right. the first streamer to get That's banned. That's right. All That's of them. correct. Not only that, it gets worse. So Ryan, back to Ryan. He was so psycho that he not only he's a mastermind at doxing. This guy will find anyone and who where you live and who you are, how old you are. He'll know all your friends. He'll find your Facebook and he'll find everybody. He wrote. He knew that Ryan was my closest friend. He managed to contact and he had a few friends in a Discord that helped him do this. But he was the brains behind the organization. And you know, the police could have reported the police. And they said it's basically a terrorist group. I said which it is, and pretty much you know got the raids on me and all this. And it's a really interesting story. I could write a book about this guy. He's he, he's he was so fascinated, you know. And what he did was he actually wrote emails. So he found out my best friend who was working with me at the time, his mum, his mum's in favor, and his dad's. Now my best friend at the time's dad worked as a janitor or a caretaker at a primary school. He wrote emails to the primary school saying and what he did was he got a picture of my best friend put loads of nazi symbols on his because he works out right so he put nazi symbols on his body he managed to do a photoshop saying to the school basically you know your son to the janitor saying you know dear principal but the janitor you have working there his son is a no nazi terrorist child pedophilia and he's disgusting you should fire him and Ryan's dad got mad at him and said, I've got all these emails come to our school. What is going on? And the this guy, Cowsbeder, was basically threatening Ryan, saying, you are going to leave Ali as a friend or we're going to ruin your life. But Ryan being my friend of 15 years said, I'm not going to do that. And so they said, okay, you made up your mind. And so they did that. Not only that, they did it to his mum. They were sending emails to his mum saying, you're a, you're, you're, a, you know, you're a whore and all these horrible names. And she was saying, so Ryan, I'm getting all these emails from people calling me all these names. What is going on? So this guy is a life ruiner. He ruined my friendship with Ryan. Ryan will say to people, it's not the reason why I fell out. He's got his own reasons. I don't know what they are. But Ryan didn't want to be friends with me no more. I've got banned. All the backlog came. So they've done well to, to separate him. So this guy is an absolute mastermind social engineer. So absolute master. I would not dance to this guy. But he's famous now. And I see a lot of people. I get a lot of emails every now and then on Instagram. I get a little message here and there going, Hey, I've got this dot on this guy, Cowsbender, and I just say, not interested. I don't care. I don't believe in revenge. I never have been. This is why the revenge porn thing is absolute garbage. And one day he'll get somebody, he'll match his maker. But that guy ruined my streaming career. But am I mad about it? Not really, because I found happiness in not in, in losing everything. I found a lot of happiness, you know, and, and that's the truth. So that's it. That's the story. But yeah, there Ooh. are some crazy people out there. At this point, I'll probably uh, have to reach out to chaos bend and maybe yeah, even ryan for absolutely. a right of reply right yeah, just absolutely. to be fair but if yeah, they sure. you know we don't know Fantastic. what if this part will how it will look but maybe i'll have absolutely. a statement from them here or something absolutely. like that yeah. sure but, do it i'll be happy but ali you know i've thrown a lot of negative uh sure. stuff at you there so you know i did see you did a, a post the other week where you said 2024 is going to be the year absolutely so hopefully this the second half of the interview will be a little bit more oh, okay. positive or have a chance for you to say you know what you're focusing Absolutely. on now Absolutely. is 2024 a comeback year for you i don't know because i i i'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get it right out there i start streaming very shortly i've told you set privately the date because we've got a start date for the streaming career and i'm gonna be on kick.com you know slash grow score and the thing is i'm not doing it for the money because we work we have our own company I say it's ours, all the income is my partner's, but you know, I'm there and we make a great living on that. It's fantastic. We've been doing that for the past couple of years and that's great. 
So, so that's only I, fan stuff, right? For people, it, I don't, I'm not going to go too much into like Lovely, X-rated you know? but, stuff. But, but it's yeah. fantastic, and it pays the bills. And she bought, you know, a couple of years ago, I lost my my Jaguar, and then she managed it in December of last year. She bought the car outright from the the um, old uh, the, the, well, the old, old buyers, and uh, that made my, my Christmas and my, made my end of the year special, right? So we're doing great financially. Um, on there and we're getting by fine we're not rich we just get by fine I, I haven't streamed in two years and i've always been a streamer i make youtube videos but i'm not a good youtuber i would like to think i am but i'm not uh you know and i've always been a streamer i talk a lot i like playing my games and as i've gotten to the age of 31 32 this year i've realized what do i enjoy doing and the truth is i love league of legends and i love it so love much and right i've had right right my employees tweet at me and message me saying just let me know we love you and i love that they love me and that makes that makes everything a hang on a minute i've got i've got to pause that there yeah. ali because you're someone who's been banned oh, yeah. from league okay. tournament i've seen a previous league of legends event in the uk internal document leaked to me by someone right and it said cool. on there uh pros and cons of the event pros uh no problems with gross score you know, or gross score wasn't Wait, at the hold on, this is news to me. Tell me again, was this recently? I've got an article. I could probably try and link it oh, in. I, I don't know no. if it was. I think oh, it was League Fest. I think it was League so Fest. So when, when was that then? Uh, I think that's 2016 League Fest. So, so the pros were no problems with gross score. What does that mean? Explain that. That means you. there was no drama that happened with you at the event. So. That was a but relief Le to them, League right? Fest. That was when was when was League Fest then? I'm pretty sure it was 2016, so it would okay. have been. I think it was the August Insomnia in 2016 right. or 17. Yeah, so but I'm, we're I think going it was back now. This is like eight years ago, but yeah. Moral of the story is, I like Riot. I know they put me through the dirt, but a, a, a few times, and it's just a miscon. I just don't think they understand me, so they just freak out and want to ban me. Or, uh, you know, and, uh, I've never been banned on their game. If they hate me so much, they're banned from their game. But I've had. I've had, you know, right, right, right employees come at me privately and say, you know, we like you a lot here. Just no right, so that's from their personal viewpoint, right, rather right, than right, right as so a whole. Right, so there's people that like me and some people that hate me, yeah. So, moral of the story is, this year, I, I'm starting streaming full time. I, we're not doing it for the money. I'm just doing it because I enjoy streaming. And I'm at that age where, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And I've thought about it. I love League Legends. I love Riot. I love TF. I love, I just love it. And I just want to do it for the rest of my life. So... Will it be a comeback year? Will we see a fame spike year? Will we get another five minutes of fame? Who knows? But if it doesn't happen, I don't really care. I'll still be doing it no matter what. Even if I got 10 viewers, 100 viewers, zero viewers, I'll still be having that stream on talking to anyone that comes into the chat, and that's what I can't wait for. And if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't change a thing to me, and that's the truth. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm, really, I'm at a realization of my life where money isn't... I've always was, When I was younger, when I was in my 20s, money was the goal. It was like, yeah, I need the money to look cool. As I've grown up, I absolutely hate these streamers, YouTubers, and I'm not saying it's out of jealousy. I'm saying it because I'm at that age where I know what you're doing. And I, I, you might have noticed, I've got, you know, I've got my old Supra, the old, the old girl, and I've got the Jag, and that's great. You know, we don't own a home. We'd like to own a nice home one day. The truth of the story is, if you're a streamer or a YouTuber, don't flex. You flex, you might feel good about yourself, yeah, look at me bragging. You might feel great. You are putting off 99.9% .9 of your viewers doing that. They're going to feel awful. They're going to sit there and question, oh, why don't I have these things? They're going to feel bad watching your videos, and they're not going to like you, and they're not going to come back to you because they're going to realize you make me feel bad about my life. I'm 30 years old. I work full time. I'm, I'm in debt. You're 21 years old. You have a Ferrari and a mansion. What the heck have I done wrong in life? So you make them people feel awful. That's number one. Number two, when the thing about life is your cars and your houses and your holidays and your swimming pool and all these beautiful things you own, they're not coming with you when you die. They have no memory, they have nothing. The things that you leave most on this earth is the people you impact. When you die, people will say, your children, your your wife, your kids, their kids will say, that man was hilarious, that guy was so football, he did it too, he did that, and that will live on for generations. And that the, the, the foundation you build of the connections you make, that lasts forever, and that's the truth. And that what will make you sleep better at night, not the Ferrari not the cars and that's the truth that's why this time around i said to sap the other day i said you know when we start streaming let's say it goes really well you know i'm not buying any other cars i don't want any other cars we've got our original jag we've got the supra and that's it i don't believe that i don't want a big house i just want to live a normal life and that's it there so you go you've said streaming full time ali is that 
two weeks or three weeks? I'm telling you right now, because I've always done this. I've always said this, haven't I? I'm going full time, and then I will stream for a week or two. Then I'll go off offline for a, a, a year or two years. In this case, it's been I haven't, I haven't streamed fully full time in three years. And three years ago, I only streamed for two and a half months before getting banned. And before that, I did some cooking streams. And now we're going back to two, the year 2000. And then I didn't stream for three years. And then it was 2017. I take gaps. I've been a streamer for 11 years. But I've never been a part-time streamer. I've been like a hobby streamer. I like I, I I barely streamed. I look at people like Summit One G. I look at all these famous streamers like Doctor Disrespect who put in the graft and they, they've done really well. I just think to myself, where would I be right now if I actually streamed every day for six to eight hours a day, day in day out, every day? Where would I be? And that is what I'm going to do. I swear on my soul. So what I've done, and I will say this now, we've used our OnlyFans money to hire and I'm going to come out with an announcement tomorrow on my side on my Twitter on my YouTube because I'm going to let people know and I'm going to tell people the truth we've we're, it's in the works we've already got the payment down and we've hired a security team because I've always had this problem with anxiety we mentioned it earlier right. anxiety has been the worst thing it's, it's, I'm in my own head I've been too scared to stream because I have some one hater to say hey I'm going to come to your address and I'm going to I'm going to petrol bomb your house obviously they're not you don't want to call their bluff but they're, you know, I've got an anxiety over that, and I haven't. I think streamed. anyone would. Anyone would. But at the moral story is every streamer out there. I mean, imagine being Pokemon right now. Imagine being any girl streamer on the internet. They're going to get death threats. They're going to get haters. They're going to get all this, and they still just they just have to deal with it. It's part of the job. You know, if you're on a phone call at a, a sale, if you're working on sales on a phone, and you get you, people get death threats on a phone, it's part of the job. I just got to get on with it, and that's the truth. So what we've done is we've used our OnlyFans money to put down. A payment to a, to a security team who are going to stay here on my streaming hours anything happens any raids any anyone turns up any any takeaways come i don't deal with it it's their job to deal with it and that's how we've combated that because i can't let one or two people take away from the thousands maybe tens maybe millions of viewers that i could potentially have and and that's my livelihood i've got a daughter I've got my missus, we plan on getting married, we want our own life. I can't let one or two people, or a group of people, five or ten, I don't know how many it is, that are going to stop me from doing what I want to do. Because mm. so many people are missing out. And that's I came out clean with it a few months ago, and all of my viewers said, you shouldn't let one person dictate your whole life. Don't let him win, push through. And that's what we're doing. So this time when I say I'm going full time, when I start streaming on kick, it's full time. It's, it's six to eight hours a day. But uh, meetings with kick, I've been, on the, I've been on Discord calls and I said you'll see and I gave them the date and they said well let's see it I said you're going to see it and we're going to see how, how big we go and maybe in a few months time you might say hey let's do another interview I say okay then and you might have more readers but we'll see until then or it flops and I only get one viewer and I, I dry out and go work at a regular job which I wouldn't mind doing I think I'd be really good at selling cars or houses yeah or kitchen kitchen appliances oh yeah yeah the kitchen appliances yeah exactly yeah <laughs> So that's it. But yeah, will it be a comeback? The question, the question was, will there be a comeback this year? Who knows? Who cares? Let's just do it because we enjoy doing it. Yeah. And, and you don't have to tell me, right? Because I don't know if you've got other things planned or you want to keep it uh, cards close to your chest. But what kind of content can we expect, Ali? Because you've done... There are people out there who liked your kitchen streams a lot. There are yeah, people who like your IRL stuff. There are yeah. people that just like your league stuff. Well, I I don't... The thing is, I'm definitely going to start with just foot in the water and we're going to start League of Legends full time as a stepping stone. Definitely get the content out. I'm addicted to League of Legends. I'm addicted like crazy. I'm on it. I'm on it. Ask Sap. I'm on it 15 hours a day. Uh, it's all I do. I don't drink. I haven't been. Dr I was drunk three times last year, right? I just don't like alcohol. I haven't, dr I haven't drunk any alcohol this year. Don't plan on to. I quit that, put that in the bin because the, the age is catching up to me and it's not. it's not. It's, uh, I get all these shout outs. I get people donate them. They send, they, they request these shout outs. Uh, a lot of people coming in saying, you know, I'm, I'm depressed. I drink alcohol a lot. And the truth of the matter is, so we put that in the bin. And the moral of the story is League of Legends is all I want to focus on. It's all I care about. I don't care about, I used to, I used to, be a, I used to have a problem with alcohol, a big problem with it. I have had a problem all my 20s and even in my early 30s. When I put that in the bin and stopped drinking alcohol, all I cared about was League of Legends. And all I care about right now is League of Legends. I'm addicted. So it will be full-time League of Legends for the time being, to answer your question. Got you. And 
you know, before I go on to League of Legends and talking about Grandmaster and all of that, yeah. um, you know, you mentioned about safety and it is such an important point because for all the takeaways you've been sent and people right. might think, ah, oh, ha, 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 look, Ali has been sent 50 well, pizzas, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There is a thing, I mean, you, you told me a while back about, um, you know, I think some of your, your, your crazier fans or viewers sent you like uh, cow poo through the letterbox oh, like, yes. and, and all oh, kinds of yes. threats. And... I've, had so, I've had all sorts. I had back, because where it was, it's my own fault. Because back in 2015, 2016, I was doing it for clout. I was like Aiden Ross. I used to love it. They used to send me hookers and I'd be like, oh, hooker. Right, okay. Then I'd react on stream. The fans would love it because it was clout and it'd be all over. Uh, you were encouraging them in a way, I was encouraging you? it. So what's happened is them old fans are like, that's the gross school we want because it was funny. That's content. But that's not me no more. I've grown up to an age on first. Well, this is now eight years ago. It's I'm at a point that's not getting that content anymore because it's not fair on the people that come here because we're using them for content, and it's not fair on the takeaways because they're making all this food and they're a local business and it's not fair on them. So I stopped reacting. I don't find it funny and it gives me anxiety because they come to the door and they bang the door, and you know they you know these guys are really mischievous. They don't pay. They don't place the order on the food. They yeah. make it out that I'm going to pay. They, and then what happens is on the other end of it, it might sound all funny and fun and games. And I'm making a reaction on the stream saying, guys, who, who plays this order? It might seem like fun and games, which I'm not ever going to do. If, if Take away ever does come when I start streaming, mm -hmm. I'll, my viewers won't know about it because I'm not going to give a reaction. But And I won't know either because the security team are going to do with it and I'm not going to know any less. And the moral of the story is I used to get anxiety because when I, when after my fans kept on doing it at the time in 2016, a local business that our friends bought were well, mad at me. They came at me. They rang me up saying, "We're going to kill you if you keep doing this. We are getting so many phone calls. I, I'm going. I know where you live." And that would give anyone anxiety. Well, wouldn't you, you just couldn't you ring the takeaway companies and say, well, "If you get any them, deliveries for X address, oh, don't do it." Work. It, it wasn't that. It, yes, it, the blacklisting does work, but these people forget. New people work for the company. They oh, forget. You know, there's no system. Thank God that nowadays everything's coming hard. So cash is actually disappearing now, and it's all coming card. Yeah. So no one could just place these fraud orders. If they're going to order food, it's paid for. Sure, I'll take a free kebab. Sure, I'll mention it on stream. Oh, thanks for the free food. If they, I mean, if it ever comes to when it's all cashless, which is always becoming, it's like 90% there. We're like on the last bit now. Thank God. So it's looking really good for my streaming career because now everything's going to be cashless. But the worst thing is, talking about what's coming, it's not just the takeaways that was it. It was the hookers. Not just that. These guys got so smart a few years ago they they got me on this tinder not just tinder. I've, never, I've never been on tinder i think i was on tinder once in 2015 for like a day and i hated it but they put me on grinder which what sounds hilarious i think you might think oh my god no way because see you might giggle at that and a lot of people would but they put me on grinder and they would write sexual stuff to other men saying hey come to this address i'm here this is me i want this and that and these men would rock up in porsches old men in their 70s looking for a layout and i have to say sorry bud but you've been done it and they think it's me then they drive off real fast all embarrassed i mean it would have been i mean i remember one day i had about 15 men separate men come to my address so there's someone on the other end of that sitting there sexting other men which is weird in its own place saying you know come to this address absolutely illegal to do stuff like this clearly you know giving out private information you pretend to be someone that you know it's kind of fraud you know you waste people's time it's embarrassing and um and yeah, and that happened. And I, and these poor men become my address, and I'd be really nice to them. So I'm, and I'd look at the DMs. I'd say, "Can I see your phone?" And I see all these DMs, and it's basically flirt, 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 flirt for a few hours. Then, hey, I'm here. Come meet me now. So it does get a bit rapid and a bit wild. But um, I've had I've had children turn up my doorstep with toys. I'm like, yeah, hello. They're like, oh, you want to buy our toys on Facebook Marketplace? So they would actually go contact people on Facebook Marketplace that are selling toys worth ten pounds. And kids would turn up with bags of toys, like black bags, saying. You, we got. Uh, you say you're gonna buy our toys, and you feel so bad for these children. And it's gonna show there are some people out there that don't care. There's some haters out there that really don't care about other people. You know, and, that, and that's the truth. I've had also. I've had snakes. I've had fucking live snakes. Real live snakes come to my address. Yeah, you want these snakes? No, I don't want these snakes. Snakes. You know, so you've had all sorts, and you can see why people do it to me because they find my reactions naturally funny. Yeah. And I used to entice it. I used to really entice it, and I just want to let any of you readers know that that's not me. I, I, just, I just don't find it funny anymore because if you're, you're upsetting the other business, the other person, you're hurting someone in the middle. Not me you're hurting. 
You're not you're hurting the other person in contact, and that's it. How are you gonna? It sounds like you've got a mix of viewers. Some people that have followed you right. since you've been banned. You've got a sort of loyal Discord now, and it looks right. like that right. is actually controlled, oh, and there aren't people yes. doing crazy stuff, banning people in Absolutely. there. So you've, you've, you've controlled it well, but then you know, I think some of the your more extreme viewers were known as the Plan. That's How right. do you you know? Do you anticipate some of them will try and come back on well, kick and get a reaction out of you? I, I would like to think that they disappeared. The moral of the story is maybe they have, maybe they haven't, maybe they're reformed, maybe they haven't. But I've seen, th so there's, th so just to let your viewers know, the plan was a hate group of mine. And they, like the police called them a terrorist group, which def they definitely were because what they were doing to me, the, they, they, they would plan. I'd get raided by the police. They would call the police and say, you know, I've got bombs at this address and I've killed my family. And I, I've been raided so many times, I've lost count. Thank God I don't live in America. I'll probably be shot by now. I'm dead. But the moral of the story is, so this hate group, I see, I, I, you know, I hear about these names and then a few years go by and they leave the group or they get pushed out of the group and they grow up and they mature and they grow up and they realise they hit the age of 20 or 21 because they're kids, they're teenagers. It's like the L9 uh, community in League of Legends. That's right. In, that's, in a way, right? I'm not directly right. comparing. Yeah, absolutely. But... The L9 group and what happens is they, these guys hit the age of 20 and they realise actually I'm a bit too old for this and I'm, this is just not boring. I was there. I used to troll people like crazy but I was eight, when I was 16, 17, 18, 19 hmm. we used to do Skype calls and call up takeaways and, uh, and be degenerates and make fun and screw people. I remember the, one day I woke up in my night when I was 19. I woke up and I realized I'm not, I don't do it. I'm bored of doing that. I think now. everyone did day, prank calls like, in their yeah, teens, didn't they? I did yeah, some silly I, with Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. sound boards and that yeah. nonsense. That's right. And then one day my, when I was 19, I woke up. I, thought, I just don't want to do it anymore. I'm hmm. just not, not in the mood. Maybe I'll feel better tomorrow. And I never felt better. And I just never got into it. So I think what happens with the, the, this hate group, the plan, is I see a lot of people, new ones come in and then the old ones leave. And it's because I haven't been, I haven't been popular in two years. And I swore on my soul. I swore as a Saf. I said, Saf, I've had nothing. I've had no takeaways to this house in the past two years. And my address got leaked two years ago at this ad. We moved to Manchester. My address got leaked accidentally. Someone actually spotted me in a local Tesco's. Funny story. Spotted me in a local Tesco's. Someone put a Snapchat out. Spotted Gross Score in X area. And it went on Snapchat. And then someone came to my stream and said, hey, I spotted you in this Tesco's and said my area like an idiot. No hate intended because I emailed him and emailed me. He seemed like a really genuine guy. And then they took that information, this this hate group, and this is how our address got linked at this current address. This is why I haven't streamed this address in two years, is because they were like, oh, he's in this area. So then they realized the kitchen I was in, because you could just, if they click, this is a new build. So this is how psycho these guys are. This is Cow's Bender. This is this guy was behind all this, because he's amazing at doxing people. Has he worked and, with the plan? Oh, yeah. He was like the head boy. He was like the highest rank in there. And because they had their own little Discord, the Discord don't exist anymore. And, you know, they were like, he was like the goat in there. And he, you know, but I think since he's become famous, oh, and he's got his own community, he's realized, uh oh, I got to get away from all this because it's going to bite me in the butt one day. So what happened was they were kind of like, you know, he lives in this area. They matched, we was in a new build. And they searched, they actually sent people in Manchester to look for new builds in my area. They found my area because it's like nine lands of new builds and they sent one of these let's call them planners around the area and came to every door and what did they find outside the last door they found a jaguar and a supra and they went uh uh we got your gross score and that is how they got my address it's that simple and then about a day later we were ready by the police and takeaways came and the hookers came and all sorts oh my god you I haven't tweeted about that have you no I but i, I came it. out i came out of it a few months ago i Right, my anxiety since I've been drinking coffee and I've grown up I've realized you know what why am I hiding with people so this time round when it gets to streaming if something bad goes wrong this time we be honest guys I'm being harassed guys this has happened and we're gonna make it public and I'm gonna use everyone in my community because I'm on kick and kick don't to be honest be blunt with you they don't give a shit if someone's coming at me and doxing me we're firing fire and fire this time round and then Twitch's eyes just say that's a big no go I don't care about Twitch. Like, sometimes in life, you've got to fight five sides. Someone's coming at you and doxing you, assaulting you, and they're harassing you, and they're trying to cause you harm. You've got to fight. You've got to put the. Uh, I've got so many connections now. My Discord, I've got over 2,000 members. I know every single one of these guys in there, and they would fight life over me because I, I'm good friends with them. If I'm being publicly, like, humiliated or something, they would stand ground. I've got such a solid foundation. And the truth of the matter is, this time around, if anyone dares to mess with us, this ain't no threat, this is a promise. If someone, an individual tries it, we fight, fight, but we gun him down too. And we, we go, okay, let's go, let's go to town. And that's it, and that's the power we're going to have. What do you and mean by gun down? 
Well, if someone's going to come at me and Doc's being threatened to throw acid in my face or do some stupid stuff like set my house fire, my car's fire, we're going to go, okay. We're going to remember. We're going to take that person and we're going to find out who they are and we're going to we're going to, we're going to see what happens. And I won't say no more. But we're not going to let this guy slide. People need to realize if you're going to say some things in life like threats. You're going to have consequences. And that's you're going it. to report them to the police. I hope. Yeah, but what's Ali. that going to do? Yeah, we will do. We'll report to the police. But sometimes the police don't do anything because the police are stupid in this country. The police in our country are ridiculous. They they they, they have this they have this rule. We can't do anything unless something actually happens. Okay, so I'm going to get this guy come to set my house on fire. We can't actually do it because uh, he has actually done it. Right, well, that's ridiculous. So sometimes you've got to do stuff that's not, let's say, you know, by, by the police. You've got to have your own sort of way of kind of getting through to them. Um, and that's it. So I won't say any more. But um, moral of the story is, back to what I was saying, we mentioned Cow's Bender, we mentioned uh, what my address got leaked. Um anxiety came around i didn't stream for a year and a half but i was too scared mm. to basically be honest with my viewers and say hey i'm not streaming because of this reason but this time around if something does happen i'm honest and i will be streaming the next day i will definitely be streaming that's why having a security team is fantastic moving forward if i do grow popularity and people try to count me this time around the legal team i've already got a legal team we have a phenomenal account right team. and that's that what I'd like, say, Ali, if you want to get back at people, at because you, what you were saying was coming team. across as a bit, uh, you know, mafia risk or this something. This time round, it's legal team. Right. Anyone dare say anything stupid or when our uprise, we're not getting our five minutes of fame taken away this time. We're going to go. And I would recommend this to any streamer, any YouTuber. If you're doing really well and you're getting people trying to say things about you, go get a solicitor, get a lawyer and put that person and get that person get them to take it back and apologize if not you go to court they lose out for damages and what does that do it's not the one because you might have 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 or 1000 people say one thing about you what happens if that one person gets penalized and they get done it sends a message to all the others uh oh i'm not going to say that about that person because that guy just got done and he's been fined x hundreds of thousands for defamation i'm now going to stop saying this about this person because it's not true and i'm going to get done for it so i've learned a lot as time because i've never had a legal team nor have i ever had a security team this time I have both. So it's like, let's go. Now, I don't want to go in guns blazing. I've got nothing to hide. I don't want to come across like I'm this egoistic Aiden Ross ripoff, which I'm not. And I don't want to be anything like that guy. I've got nothing against that guy. You know, we won't get into, onto him because the interview's not about him. Moral of the story is I'm just a normal guy who just wants to play TF and just be nice to everyone. Simple as that. I don't want to be a clout chasing, money grabbing, anything like that. I just want to play TF, keep my head down and just stream and make a living, get married. You know, I have a couple of children with my beautiful missus, and, and I, I want to see my daughter, and that's all I want, and and that is it. Are you, um, are you, you know, do, do you see your daughter regularly, okay. Ali? It must be difficult, okay. you know, as so, I'm, I'm a dad, and I'm, so, you know, sometimes they drive so, me mad, my kids, but I'd find it hard living apart from them, I think. Right. So this is uh, a real, I don't want to get too emotional because it would get me emotional to wait too deep, so I'd just be brief. So, yeah. two, I've got a, uh, she's seven this year. Her name's Ellie. She was diagnosed with autism, severe autism. She's uh, non-speech. She's never spoke. She says she jabbers words, but there's not, they're not words. Um, so with autism, your children can't be pulled from one place to another, especially long distances. Now, she lives in the south in a place called Kent. I live in Manchester. It's about 250 uh, trip, 500 round trip. Moral story is you can't put an autism child in a car for five hours. It's just not correct, you know. So... I moved to Manchester two years ago. Uh, my address was leaked and Ryan stopped working for me, but I had to start streaming. I had no money. I, I was addicted to alcohol. I went through all my savings. I got banned on Twitch. When, Twitch don't realize this, but when I got banned on Twitch, it sent me down a dark spiral. It always does. Because I have all the fame and all the money, and then the second, the Twitch don't care the how you are. I, 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 in 2016, I wanted to kill myself when they banned me. I wanted to die. Because I just wanted to be that F you. You ban me, I'm going to make you forget. I'm going to make everyone hate you by killing myself. And I was that, and that's when the police came and arrested me and they wanted me to section me luckily my sister my police officer sister told me to lie because otherwise i would have been sectioned that would have been horrible so what happened was i didn't go through with it because i thought i have a family and my friends and ryan and all this at the time so what happened was um i've got a daughter she pretty much was born um again she'll be seven this year 20 2017 and what happened was she wasn't planned love of the pieces with so i met this woman she was an ex of mine she said you know i can't get pregnant i said okay we did the deed we were just friends she fell pregnant 
you know, not to be crude, but, you know, I wasn't ready. She, you know, she told me she couldn't have children because she tried with her ex-boyfriend. It should have been, a, you know, I mean, alarm bells in my head. And next thing you know, she's pregnant. Twitter unbanning me. Twitch said to me, we can't, whatever you do, don't, don't make drama. We're unbanning you, don't make drama. I said, okay. And so her name was Rachel, and, you know, she got pregnant. And then we said, look, we're going to have to, you know, terminate this because I don't want this. And, I, you know, I didn't want to be with her because she wasn't the one. She was my teenage girlfriend and uh you know she was eight, 19 i was 18 when we, we got together so she was pregnant and then we missed the, the date for the termination and then booking when you book an abortion it, it's like another month wait and then by that point you know she's three months pregnant and she started crying because she didn't want to go through with it so it came to be that she she went full term and, and, and that was a great day the, uh, you know ellie came into my life and it was a fantastic day and i cried like a baby this is now December, late 2017 she was born and, and what happened was um, I was with this woman for three years and I wanted to do the right thing and stay with her for my daughter but I will say to anyone watching I'll say to you don't stay with someone because for the kid you got to want to be with someone because you love that person if you stay with someone because you've got a kid it sounds like some, it sounds sane but your kids will realise that you don't love mummy or daddy and what's going to happen is you're going to live in a depression that you're with someone that you don't want to be with and you can't live a life like that because you're, you're leading that person on because they love you, but you don't love them. And then you're ruining your own life because you're not happy. And so after three years, we broke up. We broke up, and then when we broke up, she met this fella. Now, I won't talk bad about this guy, because I won't mess with this guy. I will say the following. I won't fuck with this guy. This guy is a real gangster. I don't care. People might think I'm joking. People might think I'm laughing. This guy's a real, he's been inside, you know, and, you know, I just don't even talk about him now. I've got to be so careful with my words you wouldn't want to mess with this guy. It's like, I've met, I'm 31 years old. I've met a lot of people. I've been growing up. I've met so many people in my life. He's six foot fucking five with tattoos all over his neck. And he's in a gang and he wears this balaclava. He's got a gang hideout. And, you know, he's just, he's in a bikey gang. He, he, he saved me from the plan, actually. He, the plan was harassing me. And he actually did me a favor when I met him. He actually did me a favor. He made them fucking cry. He got on the phone because they tried messing with him. And he got all these boys on them. They rang me up crying because he, he got onto the, the phone and he went, you're going to apologize. And he was so, because I because he, he, has, he has burner phones, but they're called burner phones. So he had one phone on and he rang them up and because he got all their information because he's got contacts and, you know, he's got what I call, he calls them the boys. And I, I had them call me up crying their eyes out and he was on the, on, the, on the speaker and they were crying their eyes out like little babies. And this is what I'm talking about, the internet, the plan or whatever, this quad quad terrorist group, they're just nerdy little kids. When you meet a real gangster, you're going to be like, oh, shit, okay, this is for real. You know, he was threatening to, you know, he, he does, he, you know, he, he was saying all sorts. It's going to, you know, set the house on fire, petrol from him, and he knows her address, and he won't bluff me. No, this guy's a serious fucker. So, she, so my ex my ex is still with this guy, and you know, I respect both of them, and I wish them the best. Now, I moved to Manchester. She met him, you know, and he didn't like me straight away because I guess he's just very protective over his girlfriend. You know, and there was, he, and a lot of people, a lot of people from the outside go, "Well, grow school, you're a terrible father because you abandoned your child," and they're going to say that. And a lot, I still get to this day. It's such a catastrophic, it's so huge this this whole thing, and it's it's easy to look from the outside in and say you you abandoned your child, but when you see what's really going on, you realize, oh shit, there's way more to this, and it's not as easy. So I was threatened that when I moved here, because my game plan was move to Manchester, start streaming full time, become popular and successful because I was deluded make loads of money, buy a house down south, and then I can live happily ever after with my missus and my daughter. So you'd it move back, back down south. Right. It was like, well, I met my missus, Safi, and we just met, and this guy used to rock up to my address in the morning, on a Wednesday morning, and bang on my address, on my door, on God knows what, and I don't talk ill of him, but he knows how to party, and he does whatever the fuck he wants, because that's how he is. And I didn't want him, inter I didn't want him interrupting my, 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 the start of my relationship with Safi, so I wanted to get away. So I said, Saf, let's just move. Uh, let's just get out. Well, let's go. So we, we just we just booked it. We got out quick. I didn't want him ruining my relationship with Saf. I didn't want him. I just wanted to get away from him. And so we moved up to Manchester. I had a game plan to start streaming full time, make loads of money, and become successful, and keep my head down. But I was addicted to alcohol, and I wasn't. I didn't love. I didn't love the drive of streaming or League of Legends. I just did it for the money, for the wrong reasons. It all fell apart. I I was so in debt. I I don't want to get. I, I was so debt. I had to sell my Jack. Um, 
I, it was just I, I was addicted to alcohol. I, I, and that's when and Safi went and said, you know what, I'm going to do an OnlyFans just to pay for the rent. It was that bad. Thank God it done really well when we've been doing great for the past two years. Then when I moved up here, I was threatened, you're not seeing your daughter ever again. You dare come down here. You know, it was, I, I don't want to say too much, but it was, you're going to put in the hole. You're going to put in the door. You, if I see you again, you're dead. You're dead. You're in the hole. You don't want to call this guy's bluff. And that's where we last spoke. And I can't talk to my ex missus because he's got, you know, he's, he's with her and she don't talk to me because, you know, I used to know this woman, but when she met him, I guess there's rules in set where she's not allowed to talk to me. There were social services involved that got closed because she was being nice to me then. And again, I don't talk badly, but I don't have any interaction with her, nor does my mum. So my mum right now, I haven't spoken to my mum in two years. And because when I moved up here, she saw it as you abandoned your child and you're not man enough to man up, uh, stand up to this other man. But my mum doesn't understand that's easy for a, I'm not sound sexist, but it's easy for a woman to say you're not man enough to stand up against that man. But as a man, looking at how another man is, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to fuck call that guy's bluff. He's a gangster. Like, are you crazy? So it's a very big, uh, big, huge head fuck. So my mum is doing an amazing job. Despite not me seeing her for two years, my mum looks after my daughter. I think right. it's 50-50 custody. Um, my, my dad sneaks videos of my daughter to me and it makes me cry. But I've got to be strong, got to be brave. I could sit here and dwell and get depressed and feel bad, but I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be strong and um i had i had um i only had three thousand pounds in i um i sold my car back back they gave me uh like ten thousand pounds that's the deposit i put down for it and then what happened was um i cleared my credit card and i had like four thousand pounds i was like oh, okay i got four thousand pounds in my savings that's great what happened like a week later child maintenance service went to my bank account and took three thousand five hundred pounds and went that's ours and they gave it to my ex and I was so heartbroken like yeah that's my money like I can't believe they've done that because there was no communication between me and my ex and for them to do that hurt me so I had to wrench myself that they thought I, they thought child services thought I was making 100 grand a year because they googled how much does a YouTuber make oh, 100 yeah. grand a year and they went and took three grand all my money so I was so heartbroken that they had the power to do that so now I don't have an income I haven't had an income in two years and my missus it's all in my missus name but do I feel bad like that like i'm not contributing to my daughter yes that's why i'm starting my streaming career the first thing what did safi say to me tonight when you start streaming first thing you're doing you're going to send you know money to your daughter you're going she's got my ass in here i'm like i want to i want to give i just hope and i pray that that money goes to my daughter not to this other fella i don't know it's out of my power but i just want to do the right thing i want in an ideal world i want me and him to be good i want to see my daughter just as equal as my mum sees her, and I want, I want to be called this guy. And the only way I could be called cool this guy, in my opinion, is if and it sounds sort of bad, but if, I feel like if I, I know how men think, if I send him or their money, they will be more obliged. To, okay, you can see your daughter now. And I know I've probably got a backlog of. I haven't seen my daughter in two years. I haven't seen my daughter in two years, and it's been hard. And I've had so many nights and dreams and nightmares where I wake up crying, and I missed her birthday, two birthdays now, and I've cried. You know, this year I didn't cry. No, I'm not going to cry because I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to bring down the mood of the house. Mm. So that's it. So um, that is the story about my daughter. I haven't seen my daughter in two years, and it's it's gut wrenching. It's hard, and I just wish the world would understand that it's not about you know. You, it's easy to point things and go, "You're a terrible dad. You're a horrible father. You're banning your daughter." They don't know what's really going on, and it's been hard to talk about it publicly. But as as um, it's coming closer now, I'm going to start streaming and start sending money over. I thought it'd be good just to get it out there because he should be a bit more understanding where I'm coming from. But yeah, I would love to, I watch all these American movies where they have kids and they break up and they get new girlfriends and husbands and they're all friends. I'd love a scenario where me and Saf could go see my daughter and we're cool with my ex and her new boyfriend. It'd be lovely to say, oh, hi, how you doing? Good, how's streaming? Yeah, great. How's you? Yeah, I'm great. Great, that's fantastic. Yeah, great. Did you get a payment? Yeah, we did. Great, fantastic. Yeah, so that's it. Well, thanks for, you know, opening up with all that, Ali. I can't imagine, you know, being involved in a situation yeah. like that. It's, like you say, it's huge. It's, you know, right. there's a lot of... There's way more to it, but I don't want to bore ...complexities you. to it. Right. And I hope, you know, things do work out eventually so you can see your daughter. Because, right. uh, you know, I think people watching this who aren't parents won't maybe not understand what it's like. 
um, being a parent. So yeah, thank you for opening it up. And you know, when I reached out to you to interview, I didn't really have, it wasn't my intention to go this deep and, and yeah. difficult into things, okay. but you know, my two things were kick streaming and yeah. grandmaster in league. Yeah. But I appreciate you opening up and you know, being yeah. real and honest with me. Ali, I know we've been chatting for about an hour. Quite a while, yeah. So I'll try and wind it up a little bit. I've got a Go few on. more bits on the, uh, my on. list here. Smash it out. Grandmaster, how what how's it? You know what is what has changed with you that helped you get to Grandmaster? I saw you had some coaching a little while I ago. Had, right. You know, do you feel like you've reached another level? Definitely, hundred percent. I look back at any old videos of Grow Score. Any league streamer listening to this, any league player, watch out. I play against challenges on a daily now, and let me tell you, I I play against them. I outplay them. Sometimes they outplay me. I'm playing. I keep my head down. It's all about understanding the game. I was insane at. I've always been insane at Twisted Fate. That's my champion. That's my go-to. I want him to nerf him a little bit because he's too high banner, high pick rate right now. I'm learning Swain. I'm learning other champions. The truth of the matter is, I had a coach come out in September. He showed me the door. He said, "You're playing wrong. You understand TF. Your characters are amazing. You won't get any better. It's your gameplay." He showed me how to play the game. How the games are meant to be played. And I, I was a grandmaster four days ago. I lost 200 LP. I sat up all last night, night before, we're back up there, 300 LP, back in GM. It's fantastic. It's about understanding the game. What's next? Challenger is on that list. And you know what? What I'm like, I was a challenger, it's rank one. It's rank one. I watch any TF player, I'm like, I'm better than you, I know I am, you're gonna see it, Dom. I promise you, I'll be rank one before I die. Guaranteed EU West, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna have it, rank one, I promise you. And what, rank one? Place. Rank one E West, mark yeah. my words, write that down, that'll be it. You'll be challenger, you'll be making a little thing about Rose will hit challenger, and I'll be going right past that, ranks them right up there, and I'll mark my words. I'll get my head down, streaming eight hours a day on that TF every day. You'll see it, guaranteed. What changed? I learnt the game. I learnt the game. That was it. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, you've always been someone, I know it's a bit of a joke, but. Yep. The, the term the diamond police they always seemed yeah. to come for you didn't they the diamond yeah, police remember that. yeah not anymore I've, i'm hard stuck i'm hard stuck masters that's what i've been past like few months but now i think the diamond days are over yeah that's interesting it. yeah okay so that's league of legends um what is this thing i've got here? i've written down here I've maybe not done my research properly i've put a tournament community thing in the discord you're growing yeah. so I've got the League of Legends Discord. Anyone's welcome to join. If you do join our Discord, you've got to have your phone number linked and your League of Legends account linked. It's to prevent bots and fake burner accounts, right? We don't yeah. get a lot of them. We never get trolled on our Discord. I, I haven't banned someone on my Discord in months. So what we're doing is I'm great. My goal of streaming is to become the most respected, most well-known EU West player. I want to be the... My goal of this year and for the rest of my life is to become the most respected. When I see Gross Gore, they're like, respect. That's what I, I don't want the fame. I don't want the money. I don't care. I'd rather have I'd rather have a hundred viewers that love me rather than ten thousand or twenty or fifty thousand viewers that all just know of grow score. I want that. I want the respect of that. That's what I want. So, I've got Discord. Join today. We did a tournament a few months ago. It was so well done. It was so big, and I was like, "This is huge. Like, this is great." And the turnout was amazing, and we met so many people. And then I had all these people come at me saying, "You know, this could go to riot. This could be a thing, and you could commentate it because I love commentating League of Legends." And it brings you together. Love it, love it. I'm trying to learn every League of Legends champion's abilities, everything. That's what, because I like saying it by the name. Like Lee Sin's Q is, de you know, Deathmate Strike and uh, 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 what, what, uh, <laughs> it slipped my tongue now. What's Evelyn's like, R? I'm learning it. I, I don't know. I'm trying to learn. But, but you know, I like the Last of caress, me. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, I, I, need, I, I need to get, I will get down to it. And I do want to. Yeah, I could see myself becoming a everyone on my YouTube comments are like, you know, you can become a huge caster. There's times where they want me to be relaxed, there's times where they want me to cast it, and I love it. I absolutely love casting. I could really see myself doing something like that one day. I think what I, I visualize myself one day working with Riot Games, doing a little I could see myself. I, I mean what a turnaround like, that would be. Well, it'd be phenomenal. Tyler like, One turned it around, didn't he? Tyler One turned it around, you know, and he's done well and I'm happy to hear that Michaela's pregnant, but I believe one day I'll be working with Riot Games and I'll be like doing one of their help with the shout casting. I can really see myself doing that. And I really do. What on like an LEC broadcast? Anything. Give it to me. Just put it there down. I'll be, I'll be down. You know, if they're down, I'm down. And that's it. Keep my head down. That's it. There we go. Well, with the yeah. tournament side of thing, the, some streamers have done uh, tournaments that have been really popular. Drutta, I yeah. think, did something a few months ago and he had right. Team UK, Team This, Team That. Cadrill was involved. You know, those things seem to be quite popular. They, they, you know, Twitch rivals, I haven't seen one of those in a while. 
So is that something you could do, a streamer tournament? I would love to. I would love to. We're going to see how it goes. When I start streaming, we'll see how it goes. The, the viewers would love it. I would love it. Anything's open right now. Anything's down. Got it. Love and, it. you know, Kick is known for being a platform that's quite open. Will, will your Kick streams be family friendly? I, I, I've seen some of your streams. You have a, a picture of your partner, Safi. Right, right. It, well, that, that picture is just to help to say thank you and it also helps the only fans brings in um, some guys that might not know her yeah uh, she doesn't like it being on there but i'm like but it helps bring in people so there's that uh, she does she don't like to be seen as a quote unquote whore so okay but she, she understands that she she did it she got into this business because she wanted to help me out and here we are um but would it be family friendly um yes definitely like i'm not i'm not gonna go my own way to not swear if i swear i swear but I'm not. I, the thing about me is, I get days where I'm chilled, get days where I'm hyped, get days where I'm just yeah, normal, yeah. get days where I'm tired. So it is what it is on a day. But I'm definitely not going to be a degenerate kick streamer who goes around making drama and clap like 99% of the, the streams are doing. I watched a recent uh, stream of Eddie, who even said himself, "I don't like these streamers that do all this. I want someone to come along who's going to keep their head down, who's actually a nice person, who's, who's dedicated to, to, to the work, who just who I want. I want that. That's what I want. And I think maybe that might be me. But we'll see." Have you had a conversation with Kick about, you know, your past controversies and so on? Have they given you any they guidelines? Or? They, they, when I spoke to them over a year ago, they knew I think didn't care, you know, because they've got Hashinshin on there. They've got all the streamers, fan streamers on there. They're just, they, they understand. Unless you're done, where you've got a criminal record, look me up on, on any Google, look me up, go to your local government, ask, got Ali, ask, got any criminal record. They're going to say, say the same thing. They're going to say, no, I'll give you full permission to do that. Nothing. I've, been, I've had a caution once for an accident I did in a nightclub, which went over not long ago. Well, through a cuff, uh, someone it bounced off and chipped someone else in the tooth. Then he got done for assault. It didn't go through, mm. and um, pretty much I paid like a hundred pounds uh, to get the guy's tooth repaired, and because uh, he was on income support, and uh, and we came to a resolution. So I've got no criminal record, never have, never will, and um, I, that, I, that's fair on kick. Kick will, if you ain't got a criminal record, you're totally cool. If you've got a criminal record, I don't think they'll have you on there. Mm. So that's one thing about Twitch. I think Twitch should have the same rule in place where. To get probably found on Twitch, you have a criminal record, no criminal record, public criminal record, which in this case I've got none. So I've never been to court in my life ever, and it will stay that way. So Kick, love that website, and I think, and by the way, Kick will be my home forever. I don't ever see myself going back to Twitch, no matter what the circumstance. No matter how much money, no matter what, I don't ever see myself going back to Twitch. I want to see what happens. We'll see. On that note of, um, you know, uh, cancel culture, do, do you think it's got out of control? Because when someone gets cancelled, some of the things I look at are, you know, have they broken the law? What what have they done? Is there right. proof? You know, I saw something a few months ago, shout out to George Geddes, who's a really good Valorant um, journalist, who I think has sort of changed his career slightly now. But he got called out for DMing someone. And I've read this long twit longer. And, you know, I'm not in that person's shoes maybe they felt very uncomfortable by his dms but i looked at the dms and a few people were just saying well this this is just bad risk this Reaching. is just bad flirting has he done anything yeah. wrong like right. he's asked you to play a game of valorant with him or this and that right. um do you think it's got out of control i think i think cat got out of control in 20 or it was about 20 Counter culture was really popular for like three, four years ago. It, it was, it became mainstream for counter people. It was fun, but what's happened since then? It's slowed down. I don't see a lot of people get counter anymore because there's a people recognise now. Oh, this is just a clout chaser trying to get this person cancelled. Clout uh, counter culture, right? So people recognise what counter culture is, and so it can be deemed as you're just trying to cancel me. So that's what it is. So it's being deemed and recognised now. So I don't think it's out of control anymore. I think it's had its five minutes of fame, the cold counter culture. Some people deserve to get cancelled because they've, they're they like known pedophiles or rapists or whatnot. They deserve it. But right now, as it stands, I told Saf this, I feel this way. Counter culture right now, in my opinion, definitely slowed down. It was out of control four years ago. I don't think it is anymore. If someone's getting called out for something, they're going to call out for it. As for your friend who got called out for the flirting, that's just a reach. And you, he could just can't say, this guy's trying to counsel me. We flirted. I didn't know her age. Whatever happened. I don't know the story. But if it was the case, just be honest. And, you know, but my mistake was I made on Twitch and my apology video. I was told to apologize by my Discord. I had all these degenerates that I didn't like that my old friend Ryan was friends with. I didn't like the friends in my Discord. They were mods, which I didn't want the mods, but they wore. And all this stuff came out about Gross Score. Gross Score's this and Gross Score's that. And Ryan and them were like, oh, bro, get Gross Score just to make a sorry video. Make him say a sorry video. Just give him the be sincere and say sorry. So I, like an idiot, so believed them, did what 
they told me to do and came out and said sorry what happened don when i came out and said when i had all these accusations on me and all this old stuff from 10 years ago come out so gross cause this gross cause that and i came out and said sorry what happened what how does that make me look it makes me look guilty so be careful to all you trimmers and youtubers out there they come out and say sorry because you doing that you pl you are you end up you're guilty you've got a bare chance to stand ground double down and say that's crap they're trying to count me i didn't do that mm. i didn't mean that and just and that's it obviously there are some people out there that are bad that are guilty but yeah. if you are not guilty and you know you're not guilty be honest and stand ground and double down don't sit there and just go into defense call and say sorry or you will get cancelled because you deem yourself guilty by saying sorry if i could go back in time and do my video i would have do it i would say guys if all this crap come out about me i'd say in this voice and say it's all crap it's from 10 years ago if they twitch want to bow me for this go ahead it's crap they're trying to make client views for counsel to counsel me because but they're bored don't believe it and that's it thanks for watching thanks for supporting and i'll see you guys tomorrow on the stream that's how i should have handled it but i listened to the the, the, the quote unquote pr team which has got no pr experience and I landed with a Twitch part indefinite band. There you go. Do you um I'll, I'll wrap this up now because I know we've been yeah. chatting for ages, but it sounds to me like, you know, I'm not saying Safi, your partner, is like your manager or anything, but it sounds like yeah, pretty much it sounds like it's, honestly she's Safi helping to guide you like that second Absolutely. opinion. Safi is probably the best manager I've ever had. She is so brutal and like, no, you're not gonna you know, because there was talks of me like, oh, you know, what would happen if, you know, we talk and I I go, you know, what would happen if I become popular on, on kick and you know, Aiden Ross wants me to be streaming, you know, and or like Andrew Tate, you know, who knows what the world's got to hold. She goes, no, you're not going on any of them streams. I'm not allowing it. I said, okay, because you don't need any of that in your life, right? You need just you. And I'm like, okay. And then there's talks of, gonna, you know, she tells me there's people in my life you're not going to let back in. I've had so many ex-friends, ex-fans, ex-haters come to me and they write me an apology. She's like, nope. You say thank you and you don't respond and you, you close them off. You don't let these people back into your life and that's it. So Safi is the like, she's driving the vehicle. You know, I'm in the vehicle, she's the one driving it. And that's the truth. And so she's the brains behind everything. She's worked in business, she's managed many nightclubs. She, you know, she's um, she's a star. Like, and she's definitely got me you know, like, 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 in, like in position to like, you know, she's got me all like to where I am now. It's who I am and I've learned a lot from her and she's taught me so much. I've been too nice to people. I've let too many people in, in my life. And she's like, you're not letting anyone in and that's it. You know, she does it. She hates me like talking about, you know, I've made degenerate videos where I talk about like cuck stuff, and you know, for clout and views. And she's like, I don't like it. Don't do that again. You know, because you make me out to be a whore and I'm not in this now. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So I, I've, I've really simmered down and I don't need any of that in my life. And she's taught me that. That's it. I'm just a, t I'm just a regular, normal, tear was the fate player who just wants to get challenger and talk to people. Yep. She's so, amazing. So no more cooking streams then? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see about cooking streams. If. We'll see what happens. But again, it's that mixture of audience we've got. We've got the league. We've got... But everyone's growing up now, Dom. All my viewers are yeah. growing up. They're all in their, like, their 30, 20s, 30s. My, my, There's my, a new my, generation my, of streamers yeah, coming through. Right, that's you know? right. None of the young ones know me. All the other ones do know me. They've grown up. They haven't got time to watch streams anymore. So, you know, it's just we, we, we've all matured. We've all grown up. And we've all gotten bored. And we're all moving on. There you go. So I might turn on the stream, my next stream. I mean, by the way, I will say this. When I do return to kick... I do believe whole, so heartily that I'm going to have 100 viewers and I'm going to have 100 viewers for a long time. And that's, and, uh, am I happy with that? Yes, mm. I'm happy to make £10 in a stream because I play League of Legends anyway for 15 hours a day. Might as well make £10 in 15 hours and show the whole world, here's my gameplay. Have conversation with these guys. Why not? I'm blessed to have anything, you know? So it's great that the bots are there and I can look back at my gameplay and that like I'm playing music and I'm, I'm just doing something with my life rather than doing nothing. That's it. I want I want my own income. I want my own. I want my own business, and I want my own income just so I can help my daughter. And uh, and we'll see what happens. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. You have to contact me in the future. See and see if we do another interview if, if your viewers want it. Yeah. That's it. Well, Ali, thanks very much for it's your amazing. time. I know we've gone over massively. Usually my interviews, I try and keep them to I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. But there was a oh, lot to unpack, and I still yeah. think there's a lot we could have covered even more. Yeah. But I don't want to go on too long. And just lastly, you know, when when do you start streaming? Is it a certain day? I think it you may have mentioned day. it. To I've, I mentioned it to you today on Messenger, so okay. I'm not going to announce it on your video. But yeah, it's um, you know, there it is. But when you when they know, they know. But just keep checking in on that kickcom grow score. You'll see if I'm streaming or not. You see the vods, and that's it. And you'll see if I'm. I'm if they're what you you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see. So keep an eye on kickcom grow score. We'll put this video out probably when you've already when you've announced. Oh, okay. We'll time fantastic. it to go live at that's the same fantastic. time. Fantastic. So there you go yeah. then. Well, there it is. So Ooh. there we go. I won't say any more, but excited for the future. Curious. Th thanks for sharing all that, Ali. Is there anything else you want to add? Anything I might That's have? About
Miss that is about it. I'm just excited to get going and start yeah. actually having a career. I'm just curious to see how far we go now. How, you know, the next Summit 1G, I don't, not a fan of Summit, you know, but that same work ethic mm. where I'm streaming the same hours as Summit 1G. That's what I want to be. I want to be that guy that's dedicated to the, to the graft, and that's it, all I want to be. Did you say it's five days a week? What did you say? Seven days a week, six to eight hours a day, every day. You're going to do that every single Absolutely. day? Absolutely. With the balance with gym myself. and whatever else? Well, I'm not going to the gym, because to right. be honest with you, I care more about streaming than I do right. the gym. But okay. I will try and find, I will try and get the gym in there. Well, make sure you right get now. up and walk around a bit Absolutely. in that time, don't yeah, you? I'll be fine, yeah. yeah. Go for That'd a job. amazing. Thank you so much. I've got to go to Tesco. Is it closing in 25 minutes? So I better oh, the God, I've gone over, over, haven't I? Right, I'll let yeah, you okay, go. Mate. You've been amazing. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks to you, Ali, and thanks to everyone for watching. What's yeah. that? I should do podcasts, but go ahead. I mean, yeah. you should. I know you've yeah, criticised yeah. reaction content in the past, yeah. but I think you'd be pretty good at doing that stuff, to be Lovely. honest. I'll let you do your outro, because I did cut in there. Go ahead. No, it's fine. I just, you know, I'm not amazing with video stuff. I'm a written journalist, um, you know, more than anything, but I think there's a lot of clips in here we can get. But I just want to say thanks, everyone, for watching um interested to hear your views in the comments you know if if have you been critical of ali in the past do you want to give him a second chance what are your thoughts is this a redemption arc or have you been a fan of ali um you know let me know i'd like to hear people's thoughts on this because i think you've got a unique story and um you know you've got a second chance on kick so Brilliant. that's it thanks that. everyone for watching and i'll see how you get on Ali, Thank thanks you, for your time. Thank you so much. I'm going to go to Tesco's. Bye-bye. Thank you.